Hello Amiga Coders, this is Photon of Scoopix again, and welcome to part 4 in our tutorial. This is what we had from last tutorial. And it did this. And now we would like to make this a little bit more like a demo uh, by uh, removing the background. We want to make this our own program with our own background. Now demos, demos usually are full screen, so there's no window to open or things like that. If you want to do make an application, then you should use the libraries. This is about Amiga hardware programming. I promised to get into how the raster works on Amiga, and I will do just that after I adjust my mic. Now, um, the paradigm for having a display, the display paradigm, is to have have it read out a sequential uh, set of pixels and display it on the screen. Now, the keyword here is sequential um, because uh, output ports on a computer and buses and so on can't be as wide as the number of pixels on the screen. They can't be all sent at once. They're sent one by one. And starting at the top left corner, the display unit displays the first pixel, the second pixel to the right of it, and so on. It scans from left to right, then moves one scan line down, continues left to right. Uh, this way, reading the memory and outputting pixels on the screen. The Amiga was made for um, a CRT display. That means uh, the CRT displays had a um, photon beam uh, hitting a phosphor, uh, a sheet of phosphor on the inside of the glass of the CRT, and um, by using three layer masks, uh, the combined effect would be to generate um, a colored pixel. Um, RGB color. This is the same for TVs. Um, that is not flat screen TVs, but uh, CRT TVs. Uh, it works. It works the same way for flat screens today. That is, the pixels are sequentially output to from the graphics card to the flat screen, or the computer to the to the flat screen and uh, it's internally buffered and presented the next frame. When you have a raster display, however, the, any change you've made to a memory position before the raster or the chip uh, that controls the, the, the photon beam reads it, that change takes place ins instantaneously. So, um, so imagine a um, laser beam scanning left to right and downwards across the screen, drawing all the pixels from uh, some memory position. Uh, that's how it works. So, to, so what we do here in our program is to, to wait for the raster to hit this position. Where the line is, change the background color, wait for the end of the line, and change it back. Um, now, if we now we get the background um, graphics of the uh, assembler, we don't want that. We want our own background. So, um, what we want to do is to change the background color for um, the full uh, height of the raster. So, I will change this. Uh, initial weight for the top of the frame or start of the 150th second in which you are to render stuff. I'll change that to the top position and I will decide that this demo should have, have the imagine, imaginative background color of black. There you go. Let's see what happens. 
what ha what should happen is um, each 50th of a second, each frame, it should wait for the raster to hit this position where my cursor is, and um, then instantly change the background color to black, then wait for the dynamic position where we change the background color, and then change the color back to blue. So black, white, blue. That's unexpected. First of all, there's nothing up here. There's something down here and it's flickering. Well, oh wait, it's flickering up here too. What's happening up here, causing the flicker, is the operating system running its own copper list. As I move this down, well I can't because I exit on left mouse button press, you can see that it tries to change. You, here also is um, a raster weight that sets the background color to another uh, blue shade. Either way we get flicker and we get sort of a steady weight here, down here, and a change to black, but that also flickers. The reason for the flicker down here is because we have interrupts turned on and uh, these execute code that can take between uh, 50 or 100 scan lines if you move the mouse and uh, this uh, causes our code not to run um, at this position so sometimes it takes um, a little bit too much time and our code isn't executed until the next frame so how do we fix the first thing down here? Obviously the vertical position is wrong. Well, yes and no. Um, the problem is the raster position is 9-bit. It goes from 0, one can say, uh, to raster position hex 139, about a half inch below my cursor here. Um, but we only wait for a value between 0 and 255 and this takes us into um, variable size or register size use whatever you want to call it a byte value can hold a value from 0 to 255 or signed minus 128 to 127 and in this case this uh, means that we are waiting either for raster position hex 2c, which is decimal 44, or raster position hex 12c, which is 256 plus 44. So um, this means that it will, since our code takes so little time, it will hit this position twice each frame. And the interrupts are on, so we get the flicker. So if the interrupts interrupts are off, we should see the background color change twice. Once down here and once up here. Let's correct that. Now, why don't we change this to word size? Word size can hold values between 0 and 65,535. Uh, or uh, signed integers between minus 32,768 and 32,767 but the problem is if we change this we are actually changing checking another position we are checking position DFF006 and DFF007 in combined as one word whereas the high bit of the raster vertical position is in address DFF005 and this is due to how uh, to the order in which bits are stored in memory so this vertical and horizontal position register actually bridges two words so that we need to check check the um, least significant bit of the preceding byte so we change that back and we add another condition here. Bit test least significant bit, bit zero in DFF005. And we want to make sure that's zero. So if if it's non-zero, we should wait until it's zero and then we can check 
for position 0 to C vertically. <coughs> So that should fix it, right? Well, not not quite. Well, we get pretty good effect, but as soon as we start to move the mouse, you can see it flickers. And that's because the code that is supposed to be executed here is not executed here, but is instead checked the next frame because the operating system has to handle the mouse moves. Apart from that, it looks good. Uh, what we need to do is turn off the interrupts. Uh, this is how you do that. Um, the interrupt enable register um, controls um, all the interrupts that are running. You can enable and disable on all interrupts with a bit in this register, but since we are in future tutorials um, to start our own interrupts, we need to uh, clear all the bits in this register. So this is done by moving a value into interrupt enable. Well, what value should we um, poke in this register? Here's uh, where the Amiga way of setting and clearing bits in the custom chip registers comes in. You have the topmost bit, bit 15, and this word, uh, which tells you whether you want to write a 0 or a 1 into the rest of the bits. And then you have bit selectors. The rest of the bits are bit selectors, or you could say a bit mask. Uh, where there's a 1, that bit is affected. Where there's a 0, it stays unaffected. Uh, so the bit mask for um, the 15 lowest bits, i.e. not including the top control bit, is this hex value. You can verify this in, uh, in, in the console by typing the percent sign for binary and then 15 ones. That's 15 ones and you should get back 7 FFF. Now, the top bit is um, the set or clear bit, and it's 0 if you want to clear those bits that you've specified, and it's a 1 if you want to set those bits. We want to clear them, so we don't want to set the 16th bit also. So that's the value you should write to interrupt it. Now, if, if we should run this, it would indeed give us a flicker-free display and and the line would move up and down but when we press the left mouse button the interrupts would stay disabled and thus the operating system would still be uh, turned off how do we fix this well that's done by reading the previous value in interrupt in the interrupt interrupt enable register now that's the way the custom chips are designed is to have some registers write only and some registers read only. Uh, so there's a read only version of interrupt enable called interrupt, interrupt enable with an R after it. And we want to save this away. So this is the address and we put it in a data register for now. Now this gives us the lower 14, the state of the lower 14, sorry, 15 bits that we uh, cleared, on, that we clear on the next line, and it's saved in register D5. So as long as we don't change uh, the value in register D5, it will be available here at the bottom after we've pressed the left mouse button and are exiting the, the demo. Let's put up an exit label here. We can use register D5 to restore whatever bit pattern there was in the interrupt enable register. We do this by setting the interrupt enable bit. 
Uh, this can be done with bit set, just as we do, did a bit test above, we can do a bit set like this. Or a more dynamic way is to OR this value into D5, because then you can add some, some bits that you want to set here, if you should so prefer. And in fact, there's bit 14, which is called uh, the int, int n bit. This controls all the lower 14 bits, all the individual bits for uh, reading blocks from disk, from uh, when, a blitter, uh, when a blit is finished, um, when uh, the vertical blank interrupt is triggered, and so on. Um, and we want to move this into... Uh, the interrupt enable write only register, which was this address. So I forgot to tell you then that um, to calculate the value for bit 15 and bit 14 set, uh, you can calculate this in the console. We want to set to 1 bit number 15 and we want to also set to 1 bit 14 and this gives us hex C000 if you're comfortable with <coughs> hex numbers you feel free to use binary numbers or or type uh, constants for the <coughs> most common bit names in these registers. Read the hardware reference manual or the system programs guide. These will have all these bits. You can also Google them. Amiga space int enna. Uh, this will give you uh, two sources for the uh, top two hits where you can uh, have easy access to all the custom chip registers. So this is the value. To in just in case, because we cleared the interrupt, um, the int n bit, bit 14, we need now to enable it, because otherwise we would have only restored the individual bits for the individual interrupts, and not the master switch. That's it, and that's your... Um, that's your finished uh, mini-demo. Uh, which works like any any demo. It still doesn't remove the graphics, but we'll get back to that. As you can see, you can't move the mouse because the um, system interrupt that's responsible for handling the mouse uh, input is uh, not executed. We've turned it off, and when we click the left mouse button, uh, we can detect uh, the mouse click because we read the hardware register directly and when we click the left mouse button we exit the demo and it restores the, the, the system interrupts and we can click and move the mouse and so on.